Hi, I'm Steve Schlepphorst. I created the Solo Automa for the game Gugong on Kickstarter last year, and with the expansion Panjun on Kickstarter right now, I thought I'd do a quick solo mode playthrough showing off some of the new expansions from Panjun, as well as just how the solo mode works in general. So I'm going to do a quick introduction to the game and how the solo mode works on it, and then play through a game. This is the board setup for a standard game of Gugong. Um, and the way that Google works is it's sort of like a worker placement game, except instead of placing workers to take actions, um, you have gift cards. And so instead of having just a dude that I'm going to go send to cut down a tree, I have this nice Chinese vase. Um, and, and the way I use that vase is I go and find some local government official, and I trade him my vase for his bowl of fruit. Uh, so bribery was outlawed at this time in China, and so the way that bribes would have worked instead of just handing him money for a favor is that I would trade him a vase for a bowl of fruit, and then he would help me out in doing an action, in this case, uh, shipping things along the canal. So I've traded my four for his one, and then the one enters my discard pile for the day, and it will become one of my workers, one of my gift cards for the next day. In addition to that, many of the cards have bonus actions on them. Uh, and so when I would play this four here, I would get to take this action, which corresponds to this part of the board, and then I would do the canal action where I place the card. Uh, so in addition to considering, you know, how do I get the most mileage out of my cards, hopefully trading a four for like a three and not for a one, uh, I have to consider what actions I want to take, what bonuses I want, and what kind of cards I want to have available on the next day. Um, the different sub-games that make up the, the map in front of you um, are all standard in the base game, with the exception of this one over here. And this is called the Summer Palace, um, and this is one of the new modules from Panjun that I'm going to be showing off today. So I'm not going to go through the rules on each of these individual sets. There are much better videos for that uh, that explain how the cards work, what the other factors are in determining why you would take a particular action. But I do want to quickly introduce the two modules that I'm playing with from Panjun. Um, so the first one of these is on the Palace Stair. So in the base game of Panjun, um, sorry, in the base game of Gugong, uh, you have this envoy, and over the course of the game, you have to have your envoy march up the stairs, taking the palace action, in order to get an audience with the emperor. Uh, if you don't do that, if you haven't climbed eight steps by the end of the game, you lose. You're not eligible to win. And if you get there earlier, you can get certain bonuses for that. The way that changes in this module in Panjun is that you have to pick between the right track or the left track. If you pick the right track, there are these additional bonuses or payments that you have to make in the morning of each day. So if my envoy climbed to here, I could collect jade every morning that he sits on that spot. By the time he gets to here, I have to pay a jade every morning or else move down one spot. Um, on the left track, I have these little gates. So I have a if I wanted to advance to this step, if I took an action that would advance me to that step, I have a requirement. In this case, I have to have three travel tokens, a level three decree, and then four travel tokens. Uh, however, this path is shorter, so it's easier to get to the top more quickly. The other module that I'm playing with is called the Summer Palace. So this adds um, an eighth action space, an eighth worker spot on the board. Um, and it is a, a sort of um, group interactive area majority game. Um, and so when you take this action, um, you place one of your workers from your supply, so not from your available pool of workers, but from the ones that are discarded right now. Uh, your, your servants, sorry. And you put them at one of the three piers next to a pond at the Emperor's Summer Palace. Um, and as players add workers to these piers, um, they can obviously see you know, who is dominating any particular pier at a time. And then there's two different scoring conditions um, that would allow us to calculate who's winning at the particular pond being scored, and then that player can collect that benefit. So uh, whenever, in this game, whenever someone plays or puts for any reason a four card onto the board, they would immediately get to choose a pond of their uh, preference and score that pond. Um, and so whichever player has the most servants at that pond will get the benefit. Their servants will come home. And then the other players could return their servants if they wanted to. The second way that is scored is at the end of the day, after boats move in the nighttime phase, uh, the pond with the most workers automatically scores, or if multiple ponds have uh, the same number of, of most workers, then those would both score. Uh, the three benefits available are Jade, Neutral Servants, um, so Neutral Servants go directly into your servant pool and can be used to pay costs later, and, and if you collect Neutral Servants and then you use them for costs, 
they're just discarded back to your uh, general supply and, and they can recirculate as you regain and then respend them. Uh, they can never be placed on the board, but they do give you a chance to overcome um, some of the challenges of you know, running low on servants if you've put a bunch on a boat, put a bunch on decrees, got some on the wall, completed shipping several times. Um, players of the base game know that it's easy to run out of these guys pretty quickly, and it gives you a chance to still be able to pay costs. Um, the final location is the court lady, and so when you, when you um, win a pawn scoring involving a court lady, you take the court lady of your color, and then you can discard this token later in order to repeat any of the actions you're taking, either as a bonus action or as a card placement on the map. You can do it a second time. At the end of the game, it's worth three points if you still have it. Uh, finally, this location has its own decree card. Um, so this is a, a level four decree. Uh, we had only seen one through three in the base game. It's a level four decree. And, and this one is always in the game with Summer Palace. And the way it works is that you have to move your envoy back three steps in order to be able to claim it, as well as you know, pay one if there's any workers there. And then it gives you two points per neutral servant that you have at the end of the game to a maximum of 12. Uh, the final thing I should probably note is that the neutral servants are limited. There will only be four of these per player in the game. Uh, I think that's a pretty good or a good enough introduction to the base modules of Panjun. Maybe the other thing I'll say before we get started is just kind of the way the automa works. Um, so in this game, um, the Automa has, the Automa is called Mung, and he has his own set of gift cards, just like the players do, uh, and he plays them and makes exchanges on the board. He does get to ignore the values of the cards, so he's got kind of a special relationship with the Emperor, and so he can ignore the cards that come up. Um, so if, you know, if he wants to exchange for an aid, he's able to sort of muscle in there and trade a bad gift for it, uh, and take the action anyway. Uh, and so the Automa of Mung is controlled by uh, this deck of 11 action cards. And on Mung's turn, he'll flip over an action card, and he'll flip over his gift card. And the action card will show, during daylight, here's where his card should be exchanged. So in this case, this card should go to the, um, to the Intrigue location. So I'll slide the Intrigue location in here. This card will go into Mung's discard. And then he'll take the action on the card. Uh, which in this case would be to advance his Intrigue Marker by one and, and take the uh, first player token. And then he'll take the Location action, which actually is Intrigue again, so he would advance there again. Now on his second action, he would flip this again, um, and here he's going to take the Summer Palace action. And so he's going to take his, his eight card with no bonus. He'll slide that into the Summer Palace. Um, and then he'll take the Summer Palace action like normal, so he'll take one from his supply. And then Mung has a special rule to kind of determine uh, where he'll place his servant. In this case, it would be at the Jade Pier. Um, and just because that's he's got a sort of priority list, and I'll, and I'll talk through that when we get in the game. So over the course of the day, Mung will flip an Autumn card every time he has a gift card until he runs out of these gift cards. And then he'll go back through these cards a second time and they have a secondary twilight action on the bottom. So between daytime and nighttime, Mung takes twilight actions. And what these basically do is give Mung a chance to go back and contribute additional servants to upgrade his day actions. So when, when players take actions in Gugong, they can pick the normal version, place a servant on the wall, or the upgraded version, pay one to place two servants on the wall. Well, when Mung goes to the wall for the first time in that day, he's not going to know how to budget his servants very well. So he just places one then. But when it gets to twilight, he gets the option to go back, pay one servant, and place a second servant on the wall. So it's like he's retroactively upgrading his action. Uh, the final thing I'll, I'll just kind of point out with Mung is that Mung has what's called his special action card. Here it is. And at the beginning of the game, you randomly select which of these locations is going to be Mung's sort of special action this game, or his special focus. Um, and, and the lore goes that the Emperor has contacted Bung and asked him to help out one particular official. And so in this game, we're going to have uh, his, his double servant is here marking that the Great Wall is his special action. And so if he's to flip this card in the game, uh, he'll take his gift card and he'll go and place it on that location. And then he'll take the full action here. So in this case, he'll put two of his workers on the Great Wall, uh, not paying anything for them. Um, and so he's, he's getting to do a free, um, advanced version of that action, uh, and, that, and that lets him take that action more frequently in the game. Um, and so you get to kind of uh, play a different game with some variability in the solo mode. 
Uh, so some games he'll be building on the wall all the time, in other games he'll be traveling around collecting taxes, uh, in other games he might be shipping all the time, and so on. Okay, so let's reset the board and then begin the game. Okay, so I think I have the board all reset. I think I remember where everything went. Um, and let's start playing. So I've got the first turn. I open with uh, the, the sort of standard opening cards here. I've got my uh, 2, 4, 5, and 9. The destiny dice are 2, 4, and 5. Just kind of a bummer for me. That's everything I have in my hand. Um, and, and when I play, I always like to get the double servant online as soon as possible. Um, and I see that there's a traveling decree out, which I quite like. So I probably want to be moving towards that. I'm going to go ahead and start with that. So I'm going to take this 5, which is on the destiny dice. I'm going to pay 2 servants to go ahead and claim that traveling decree right away and get 2 points. So Mung is playing on the Intrigue location, um, and he's playing with this shipping card. So that worked out nicely for me. Um, so he plays here, he takes the boat action, so when Mung does that, he puts one of these servants on a boat. And his boat doesn't move right away, his boat will just drift down the river, and then he has some scripted actions that he'll do. So when he gets a third worker on the boat, he'll automatically complete it wherever he is and get an extra card twice, and then he'll get four points from then on. He goes ahead and takes the Intrigue action then, so he um, bumps up on the Intrigue track and takes the first player marker for next round. Alright, it's back to my turn. I like... What do I like? I like traveling. Yeah, there's pretty good actions on traveling, so I'm going to go ahead and, and claim that spot. And I am going to pay one extra servant in order to move twice. And let's see. I think I'm going to start over here, and I want to do the reclaim a card one right away. So let me grab that. Let me get back my four that I claimed already. And I'm going to go ahead and take um, this new travel token, which lets me put two of my workers from my supply into the Summer Palace area. So I'm going to go ahead and drop one right away there on the Neutral Servants and one on the um, Court Ladies. I think that's going to work out well. Um, okay, and then yeah, that was my only action was uh, traveling. Mung's turn. Mung is going to the um, Summer Palace with his seven, and so he'll place one of his servants here. Okay, so the rules for Mung placing one of his servants in the Summer Palaces. His first priority is to get as close to winning something he's not already winning as possible. Um, which means, in this case, that's going to tell us he puts it on Jade. So he looks at the pawns and he says, okay, of those that I'm not winning, are there any where I can move as close as possible winning? So first he wants to look where he's tied and see if he can pull ahead and be winning, and then he'll look if he's down by one and see if he can be tied and so on. Um, so in this case, that's only one pawn, so he'll place it Jade. Um, if he's winning all of them, he'll, he'll place a servant on the one where he's winning by the least. And if there's ever a tie to settle, then among the tied pawns, he looks for these things in the following order, which are kind of complicated, but they, they script his interaction. First, he wants to get Jade. If he's not, if he doesn't already have as much Jade as the day he's on, then he gets Neutral Servants if he doesn't have as many Neutral Servants as the current day. And then he'll get his Court Lady if he doesn't have it. And then he just defaults to Jade, if, even if he has plenty, and then he'll default to Neutral Servants, even if he has plenty. Um, so that's kind of his the steps that he takes uh, to make a decision. In this case, like I said, he's able to uh, pull ahead in the Jade race, and so he'll do the Jade race straight away. Uh, so that's his turn. Um, it's my turn now, and I think what I'm going to do, um, I like the idea of traveling again. Um, don't like the idea of having to pay a bunch of servants, but I think it's going to work out okay. So I'm going to show this interaction, which is a little complicated and has some nuance to it. So I'm going to play my four here and discard that five. And in order to play a worse gift, I have to pay two servants. So I'm going to do that, amount of servants. And as soon as my four hits the board, um, if that would be because um, 
because I played the card or because I used one of the uh, switch place effects, something like that. As soon as my four hits the board, that four is the Emperor's favorite gift. And so I get to pick one of these pawns here and score it if I want. This has actually already come up this game when Mung played this first turn four, um, but it didn't, uh, it didn't do anything because there was nobody on a pond yet. So I'm gonna pick this neutral servant's pond and so my worker scores there, I have the most, that worker comes home. I take two of these neutral servants, and they are immediately available. And then I continue my turn. Um, so I'm taking a palace action. Um, and I think I'm just going to do this more simply and go up this left-hand side. I think I'll be able to hit those. Uh, and then I do my travel action. So I'm going to pay my neutral servant, and I'm going to move twice um, on the, the travel track. So I'm going to move over here and get this... Uh, um, boat token. So this lets me put one of my workers on my boat, which goes right here. And then I'm going to get the two servant token. And that lets me reclaim two of my servants. All right, Mung's action. Uh, Mung is taking his special automa action. We've we've seen that already. So he's putting this two here. He'll take the intrigue action first, moving up the wall once, and then he takes the super wall action. So he'll put two of his servants down, and he doesn't have to pay anything for it. All right, it's my turn, and um, let's see, it's not, I'd like the double servant. I don't think I can profitably get the double servant this turn and do anything with it, because I don't have a boat card. Um, so it's gonna take me two actions. So ending the turn with the double servant is not terrible, uh, but I don't know if I'm in any rush to do that. Um, the dice are two, four, and five. I quite liked playing that four. I guess I can score that lady again. That's pretty good for me. Yeah, so maybe since I already have three... Oh, you know what I can do? Here we go. Yeah, so I'm going to play a four right here at the canal action. And remember, as soon as I play a four, I get to score one of these pawns, and I have one servant at the court lady, so I'm going to take that servant, and I'm going to claim my court lady. And she's still let me repeat an action, so I'm going to do this palace action. Oh, I moved Mung up last time, that should have been me. Um, I'm going to do the palace action, I'm going to advance again, because I have three travel tokens, I can do that. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the canal action. So the canal action is put a guy on a boat and move him one. And then I'm going to discard the court lady, so she goes back to the pond, to take that action again. So I'm going to put another servant on the boat, move the boat again, and I'm going to score the double servant. So I'm going to cash in this boat. I put one servant there. I claim the double servant to my supply. And I still have one action left uh, with the double servant to make good use of it. Uh, Mung's turn. Mung's going to jade with his eight. So he'll spend two buy one of these cheap jade. All right, it's my last turn. Um, I could go to the wall. I could, let's see, I think what I'm going to do is buy a morning decree. There's a morning um, recover a servant decree, and there's a morning advance the envoy decree. And those are both very good. Um, I like having that um, just to get those free actions over the course of the game. Getting that earlier is better. Um, let's see, where am I on these? A one and two fives, so I should win Destiny Dice. Um, hmm. Alternatively, if I take this action, then in nighttime scoring, I might be able to win more neutral servants. And these are very good to have also. So that's kind of a toss-up. Um, I do have this one decree card in here, so maybe I'll save that one and play that on the, on the nine last time. Or next time. This is tough. Okay, I don't have any um, intrigue, so I don't think I hate just putting a servant on the wall, even though it's not going to do me a lot of good. 
um, but I think I do want to work toward um, these servants. So I am going to go ahead and play this here. Um, this is a worse value, so I have to pay my double servant in order to be able to play here. And if I remember right, Mung is going to um, get to play one more worker there in the evening, and I think I'm okay with that. Um, I would like to win either way, and I think right now I will. So I think I'm okay with that, um, with just placing one servant from my supply um, to get more neutral servants. So I'm going to play on that. All right, what do I want to do with the wall? So my option here is... Um, to just to cash in these tokens and get a single worker to put on there um, Or to just kind of stay out of it for the moment And I think I'm just going to stay out of it for the moment I don't think I want to commit servants there and make that easier for Mung to score Especially when that's his chosen focus I'm not even going to get decree benefits So I'm going to opt not to do the wall And I'm going to place this worker from my supply onto the um, neutral servants track And I'm going to call that good enough all right, so we're done with the day now. We're, we're both out of cards. We have nothing left to do. Uh, that means Mung goes to his twilight phase, and so he's going to um, flip the cards over that he played from the day, and they're going to make a second appearance where he'll be able to upgrade his actions, um, if he can afford them. So the first thing he has is upgrading uh, his intrigue action. So earlier in the day, he took an intrigue move one action. Now he's going to upgrade it. So he pays this remaining servant, and he's going to uh, go two more spots, going from one that he went before up to three. Second, he'll move his envoy back one if he can to take an extra um, pond action. He doesn't he doesn't have his envoy on board yet. Third, he took his um, super action, so he gets a, a free travel action at nighttime. Um, so he's going to take this um, discard a card to get a jade tile, uh, and he's got a special rule that when when that comes up for him during twilight, he just moves one victory point, and then he's going to advance his traveler one more time. And this will advance his Envoy 1. Um, but he doesn't go back retroactively and get the, the benefit for, um, for the Summer Palace now that his Envoy is on the board. Okay, that was Twilight. So Mung's, Mung's cards from the day are discarded. And then we go through the normal scoring. So Mung automatically gets a Destiny Dice score of uh, 1 for each day we're on. So we're on day 1, he gets a 1. And I have to beat a 1, which I will. So I've got two fives, so I get two of my servants back. And I win. That means I go up one, two, three. I go up one on the track. And these will be my cards for the next day. And then next, the boats automatically move one space, so his boat floats down the river. And finally, there's pond scoring. And so pond scoring in the nighttime looks at all of the ponds uh, for a total number of servant count. And whichever pond or ponds have the most servants will all score. So right now, these two ponds both have one servant. They're both going to score. So mine scores, and I get two more of these neutral servants, which is fantastic. Mung scores, and he gets a jade. And that's it for the day. Uh, so in just a second, we'll move on to day two. Okay, we're ready to start day two. Um, so marker down to day two. Uh, first thing is that the golden first player token goes to Mung, who got it on the intrigue track. Second, we're going to refill any travel tokens that are missing. Uh, third, we're going to reroll these destiny dice. Four, five, two. That seems improbable, but there we go. Um, next, we're going to look for morning decrees. There are none. We're going to get uh, servants for the day. So I got four servants. Mom gets four more servants. J down. And then finally, we look for uh, any benefits from the envoy track. So Mung and I are both too low to get any benefits from that yet, or I guess I'm on the left track, which has no benefits, and he's on the right track, but too low to get any. Um, and then we start the day. So Mung's discard from yesterday, his discard pile from yesterday, comes his new hand. Might as well. All right, his first card, he's going to the palace. Uh, he's going with this card. So first he takes this Summer Palace action, so again, he's going to look at the three pawns and say which is he the closest to taking the lead on, and since they all have zero, um, all of them are equally good for him. Uh, so among the three tiebreakers, he'll look to say, does he have as much jade as the current day? Yes, he has two jade, and it's day two, so he's happy about jade right now. Second, does he have as many neutral servants as the current day? No. 
So he's going to place one of his servants from his uh, supply, not from his active ones, um, on the pier for the neutral servants and try and win that. Uh, the second thing he's going to do is he's going to take a normal palace action. So he advances his envoy one on the palace. And it's my turn. So I'm looking for twos, fours, and fives again. Um, for the destiny dice. Uh, I would love to get more neutral servants at some point today. Um, I have a lot of servants to spend, including uh, I have a pretty lucrative engine at this point with travel tokens and the double servants, so I can pay a lot of costs. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do with my um, wealth is I'm going to go over here and do a double entry action. Um, so I'm placing at the, in, er, at the decree action. So I'm placing on decree and I'm um, using a decree action here. So eventually I, I'm planning on getting this final decree, um, the decree decree, so getting a bunch of decrees over the course of the game. And I'm also planning on getting a bunch of neutral servants. Um, down here. So I'd like to get both of those before too long, but I might grab the cheaper ones right now that are going to give me uh, morning benefits um, for the rest of the, of the game. Um, so I'm going to do, I think because I have my double servant, let's see, you know what, I'm just going to do the two cheap ones. So I'm going to pay my two neutral workers that I just got to place two of my own workers on these two decrees and score a total of six points. All right, Monk's turn. He's going to go play on the decrees, and he's going to do it with the six card. So he gets one of his servants back immediately. The way that Mung's decree works is uh, he tries to play on a level of decree equal to the day, so level two decrees, and he looks for whichever one is cheaper, in this case the jade decree, uh, and then his tiebreaker will be he'll take the bottom one. Um, so he would take the, the jade even if I wasn't on there. So he'll pay two in order to place here. And his J is cheaper for the rest of the game. And he moves up two points for that. Um, okay, it's my turn. Um, I still have a bunch of double servant actions I can do um, if I need to pay expensive stuff. That's something I'm happy to do. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and play this regular five, not my, not my wall five yet, um, to the canal. and take just a regular canal action, which is to place a boat and then move it one. I'd like to get this extra card. Um, and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna plan to do that. Uh, Long's turn. He's going to travel with his seven. So he moves up one here. And then he does a standard travel action. So he moves, that's me. He moves one spot takes this token, and he places one of his workers from the reserve onto the wall. So he is filling up that wall. All right, I was planning on traveling. He kind of snatched that from me. That's fine. Um, hmm. Well, I need to get a level 3 decree before I can move any farther up the um, track. And I need to keep my four travel tokens to do that. And these are both kind of expensive. Well, I don't hate, I, I kind of like grabbing this 6. So I don't mind this at all. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I already have three decrees, and this will be my fourth. So this one's better. I think I'll probably get both of those eventually, but I'll go ahead and grab the decree decree. So I'll pay the double servant and the neutral servant to place this here. And that'll score for me later. Mung is going to the canal. He's playing that card there. And that lets him get one victory point. He can't make the exchange. He'll play a second worker, second servant on his boat. And I think I am going to um, See, I don't want to just opt out of the wall again. That seems pretty bad to keep doing that. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to play this five here. Uh, for the wall action, I am going to go ahead and place uh, my guy here. I, he's going to score, but he was going to score anyway. That's fine with me. I'll just have a guy on the wall. Um, so Mung scores the wall. He gets three points. Here's Servants come back. He goes up one. 
And then we can do intrigue benefits. I have none, he has five. What he does is he'll buy a jade if he can, or he'll buy a single servant if he can't. So he'll buy a single servant here. All right, that was my wall action. Um, and then for my, for my boat, I'm gonna discard these two travel tokens to get back my double servant. I'm gonna place my double servant here, and I'm gonna go ahead and claim this extra gift card. I'm gonna draw a card. It's another boating action. The game wants me to boat a bunch. It's actually not terrible to go boating again. Um, I don't love it because so I'd love to, well, I'd love to skip over, but I can't get the, um, the, the floating of the boats is not going to work out well for me. So I think I'm going to hang off. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll put a worker on there, but I'm not going to plan on making that um, a big deal at the moment. Let's see, I am going to, oh, I am not going to get that. Yeah, I want that. I kind of want this. Um, don't have a lot of other great options. I can get the I can travel, but I can't travel very well. And I can't get the four tokens yet anyway, so I can't go up the palace that far. I don't want to be swimming in twos all game, but maybe that's just fine. Maybe that's just fine. Um, okay, let's let's go ahead and um, claim those neutral servants and end up trying to be really rich tomorrow. So I'm going to play this here, take that two. Um, let's see. Sure. No, I'm going to keep those. I'm not even going to place on the canal. I guess I don't. I don't want that benefit that bad at the moment. I am, however, going to do the um, the the, uh, the B action here. So I'm going to move my envoy backwards one step in order to place two of my workers from my supply um, to contest these neutral servants um, against Mom. So I think that's I'm going to win those. I think at, at nighttime, and that's uh, going to be good for me. All right, Mom's twilight phase. Um, so he flips these back over again. Um, so first action, he can pay two more servants, which he will, to go up one more spot here and one more spot here. He can travel for free, which advances his envoy. He can pay two more servants in order to travel again. Um, what he'll actually do here is he'll turn in two travel tokens to be able to do that. Advances his envoy again. And he'd pay one servant if he could to put one more on a boat, but he doesn't have uh, the two more servants to make, make sense of that, so he's not going to do anything with that. Um, so that's his cards for the day. And we're on to nighttime. So Mung automatically gets two servants back for Destiny Dice. Two, four, five. Two, four. So I had two, which is nice to have two. Uh, but I am going to lose the tiebreaker on that. So he's going to get one, two, three, and then he's going to go up one spot on the envoy um, on the palace track. Um, his boat floats. And then we're going to do nighttime scoring for this. So again, I have I have earned the majority now, so my uh, servants come home, and I get two more of these into the pool. And then that is it for day two. Okay, we're heading into day three now. Um, so day marker advances. And Mung, oh, maybe Mung got it, maybe he didn't, I might have forgotten to give it to him. Um, but he is still first player. Uh, we're going to refill these travel tokens. That's it. I'm um, going to reroll Destiny dice. Two, two, and eight. There's four twos we've had so far this game. Uh, morning decree, so I have a pair of them, so I get to advance one and I get a servant pack. Uh, 
finally uh, serving the come for the day, and I'm actually gonna, so notably I'm gonna put, um, let's see, I'm gonna leave, you know, yeah. I'm gonna take three neutral servants, because I'm I'm fine paying costs with neutral servants, I'm gonna have enough of them to do that with, um, but I wanna have a couple new neutral servants in my, um, in my supply, uh, because some things require them. Sorry, a couple of my um, my player color servants in my supply. Um, in case I get these actions, or in case I go to the Summer Palace or something like that, that's going to um, be more helpful. Um, okay, and then, so that was servants for me. You get servants for today. And then his morning, his morning action here is that he actually has to pay a jade. So he's going to lose a jade um, back to the supply, or else he would have to move back down the track. Um, so he pays a jade, and then we are going. So his first card is going to go to the palace. It's our palace. Um, he's playing his boat action there. So for the boat, he's going to fill this up. And his boat is done. He gets an extra card. And then he takes the palace action. So again, he wants to win something that he's not already winning. He's picking between Jade and Court Ladies. And the Jade is his preference here because he's back down below uh, what he would like to keep up his, his rate of that. All right, let's see what I've got. And let's think. I don't hate winning either court ladies or um, neutral servants. Um, I'm on the wall, but I'm not doing great there. I like winning more decrees. Um, twos are really good for the dice today. Got a three, which lets me swap a card onto the board. Um, if I do that before my four, so I think what I'm going to do Go ahead and um, play a six here and reclaim a servant. And then um, I'm not sure I care about first player, but I do want some intrigue to work with because I'm planning on getting some points from the wall. So I'm just going to pay. Um, I kind of like having two of those back, but I think I'll just pay one of these to move up three spots here. I'm fine with that. All right, he flips, he's going to the wall with a four. So as soon as he plays the four, he immediately scores a pawn that he's choosing, and his pawn priority works the same as his selection priority. So he'll only score where he's winning, and he wants to do jade the most because he's not um, keeping up with his sort of jade quota. So he'll take a jade and discard it. Uh, he's going to go up the palace, so he's at the top of the palace. He, he will note have to pay a servant every day for the rest of this now. And then he takes the great wall action, so he puts one of his servants on the wall. Swap that out. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this three um, here. And I'm actually going to swap um, my two right here out for this four and put it in my hand. So I've got a pair of fours in my hand. And then when I take this action, I'm going to take the um, bonus version of it. So I'm going to go backwards one. Ha! See, here's where I failed to do this. Um, I didn't leave two of these in here, and now I'm paying for it. Um, I guess I'm not going to move that backwards one. Um, I'm just going to place one worker on the 
um, poor ladies, I guess. Well, that, that messed that plan up. Um, that's fine. Mung's action, he's going to go traveling. He's five. Fix that. Hmm. Alright, it's fine, it's fine. Um, the boat is not great. Buying Jade is not great. The victory points over here are pretty good. The wall is not terrible. I need the travel tokens, but I don't actually like going there at all. Um, yeah, I, quite, I do quite need the travel tokens, so uh, I need to do that at some point. Um, let's just do a bunch of traveling. So we'll play the four here. I have to discard my, in this case, my double servant to pay extra to be allowed to do this. As soon as I play the four, I pick an area to score. So I'm going to score my court lady. Grab that. And then I get to take a palace action. So I'm going to move up one here. And then I get to take a, um, a travel action. I'm going to discard this in order to do a um, double travel. So I'll come here first. And I'll grab this token. And put one of these guys on my boat. That's fine. And then my second travel action, I'll come here and take this two victory points. And I think I'm going to discard the court lady in order to get to travel again. So I repeat the action, so I'm going to pay one to upgrade it again. I'm going to come here to get um, my envoy to advance, so now I'm able to do that because I've got four. And then I'm going to go... Um, here. Take the um, wall token and put my double servant from my supply onto the wall. So the wall scores, um, I get three points, my envoy goes up one, and then we can take entry benefits. So I get the first option, so I am going to move down one in order to get my double servant back, and Mung will move down one in order to get one of his workers back. Alright, Mung's out of, uh, out of an envoy deck, so I'm going to reshuffle this for him. going to the Summer Palace with his Decree card. So at the Summer Palace, or sorry, for his Decree first, it is Day 3. He wants to buy a Day 3. Um, bonus if he can afford one, he certainly can. He'll get the cheaper one. He'll pay 3 place there, so he'll get a point for every 3. And then for the Summer Palace, um, he is picking between Jade and the Court Lady that he can take control of, and he would rather do Jade, because he doesn't have three Jade yet on day three. That is his turn. I... I think I'm going here. Two's so good on the Destiny dice, I'm quite happy to do that. So I, I get the... Um, I'm going to score one for uh, going up the um, palace track when I'm already at the top. Then I'm going to take the wall action. To do that, I'm going to discard a uh, neutral servant in order to place two cubes there, including my double servant. Um, oh, I forgot to do my four scoring, which just means I planned poorly. I had nothing to do down here, but I, I, if I had set that up better, I could have done it. Anyway, um, the wall scores then. Um, I am winning it, so I go up one, two, three. And then I, my envoy advances, but I'm already at the top, so I get one more. I discard these. I'm going to go backwards one in order to unlock my double servant again. Uh, Mung's going to go backwards one in order to get a servant for himself. And Mung's taking his special action, so he's playing here. He's already at the top of the palace. He'll score one point. He's doing his special wall action, so he'll place two workers on the wall. And then he's done. Um, and I've got one one final turn, and I have a bunch of servants. And so what, what's going to inevitably happen here is I think I have reasonable destiny dice numbers 
Um, oh yeah, I've got four matches, so I need to spend as much of this as I can. Um, and so the best way to spend a bunch of Destiny dice uh, at the moment is to come here. Sorry, the best way to spend a bunch of servants. Um, and I'm going to spend my double servant for one, two, um, three, and then I have to pay one more because he's there in order to place that servant right there. And that finishes my turn. Um, Mung is on to his twilight turn. And he's got no servants available, but he'll be able to um, produce them. So first, he can move his envoy back one to place an extra worker here. And Mung has a special rule that he will never take a twilight summer palace action that would reduce the number of places that he's going to score. Um, but in this case, it's actually going to increase the number of places that he'll score. So he will move back one to place this from his supply onto the court lady thing, and now he'll score all three of those, um, which is quite strong. Uh, second, he can pay one extra in order to place again on the wall, and he'll do that. He's going to pay, um, he's going to trade in this for one servant and this for a second servant to get two more servants back. He'll pay one to place on the wall. He's got all of them, so he's the only one who scores. He goes up one, two, three, and then his envoy comes back up to the top. Um, and this does, this is correct, my envoy doesn't step in to fill that top slot. His can reclaim it. Um, and then he'll take an entry benefit. He'll move down one in order to get a servant back. He can pay two more to travel, but he can't afford it. He can move his envoy back one to place another token. And he won't do that because he's already scoring all three. And finally, he gets a free travel. So he'll come around here, take this token, get a servant, and his day is done. So for finishing out nighttime, he gets three servants for destiny dice. I believe I said I had four. Um, yeah, two twos, and it's up there twice, so I get four back for that. Two, three, four. Which means I win, so I get one, two, three, and I go up a spot for the palace envoy. Um, the boat moves, so my boat moves down a spot. And then nighttime scoring, and he wins all three of these. So he gets two extra neutral servants, he gets a jade, he gets his lady. Okay, we're on to day four now. It's the final day, so we both need to end up at the palace track. Um, we're there now, but I'm planning on going back down it. Uh, Mung remains first player. Fill in the missing travel tokens. Okay, morning decrees. I'm already at the top, so I'll go up one. And then I get to take a servant. Destiny dice. Three, four, five. Um, oh, I did those out of order. Uh, and then income for the day, so I'll get these four. One gets these four. And then benefits and penalties. So since he came up the right track, the game remembers that, and so he has to pay one of his servants in the morning. Um, so we'll just pay one of these things. And then Mung gets the first turn. Uh, the one thing I'll note is at this point, I'm down to four servants. Um, I, ha I mean, this is this is a preposterous situation for the kind of the normal game um, where I wouldn't be able to function on this. It's because of all these neutral servants I've claimed that I'm able to um, play with six six of my servants on the board. Maybe, yeah, I guess so. Um, whom am I missing? I must have some somewhere that I don't even see. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, and then yeah, two six on the board and two canal bonuses. Um, all right, he's going to start the day at the Intrigue. He gets this little bonus point, and then he gets the Intrigue, so he's going to end the game with the first player marker. No longer matters. And then that, all right. And then the Destiny guys, I'm not overly concerned with anyway. I think I'm going to make it um, back up to the top of that. What I am worried about is making sure that I claim this Decree down here, which is going to be worth 14 points for me, 12 for it, and then um, 2 for my Decree Decree. Um, and in order to not mess that up, I'm going to have to walk back down the track and then back up the track, and so I need to keep four travel tokens available. So I have a lot of resources here to spend, 
um, but I need to do that um, thoughtfully. So I think I'm going to start um, like this. I'll start by putting a 2 there. And I'm going to pay... I'm just going to pay these two... Yeah, I'll pay two neutral servants to do that because I want to keep... Um, well, I'm going to go ahead and pay the double servants to play that there. Alright, I'm going to take the canal action. Um, so I'm going to discard two of these to reclaim the double servant. I'll put the double servant on my boat and move it one. Um, and then cash that in for an extra card. And then I'm taking the um, decree action. And so for the decree action, I want to claim this extra servants, neutral servants decree down here. And that means I need to move backwards three spots and place a servant there. And it's quite good, but of course I want to move back up past that um, maybe before spending more of my, of my travel tokens. All right, Lung is going to go by Jade and advance up the palace. So if he plays a four, he would immediately score one of these, but there's, um, there's nothing for him to score. Oh. Yeah, so on his, I missed this. On his last action, he actually would have discarded his court lady um, in order to take the entry action a second time, because that's where he played his, um, that's where he played his turn, um, which is maybe, you know, not the best. If you get the court lady in the game, don't discard it for an extra entry, but that's what Monk's decided. All right, he's playing a four. He can't score any Summer Palace bonuses. His, his envoy is going to move up one, which gives him a point since he's already at the top, and then he's able to buy more of that cheap jade, so he's going to buy another uh, two-servant jade. I ideally am going to make a bunch of money off of my um, my Great Wall cards. I don't need any more decrees. I don't hate finishing another boat because because four points is quite good um, at any point in the game. I do need oh I don't need more travel tokens, but I do need to go up that track. Let's play a five in order to move. Um, this servant from my supply to the court lady, which is the one that I want to prioritize. Um, the neutral servants are gone, they're limited. Alright, Mung is going to the canal. And he's playing an intrigue card there. He puts a boat out. Alright, I'm going to play on traveling again first. I think that'll be fine. I think I'll be okay. So I'm going to go there. Which I have to pay to do. And then as soon as I play the four, I'm going to score this. So I'm going to take the, um, this court lady. And then I'm going to do a boating action. And for my boating action, um, I am going to um, discard two of these tokens to get the double servant back. I'm going to pay a servant to take the upgraded boat action. And then I'm going to put both of these guys on this boat and immediately score four. I think that's a good, I think that's a good action. Um, Kind of puts me at the magic number of 30, which is where my um, my three points decree maxes out. Um, and then I'm going to take this action, which lets me go up the temple once, um, up the palace track once. So I do need to get two more travel tokens, but I think that should be okay. Um, I think I'll have enough resources for that. All right, Lung is going to the palace with his six. So he is boating again. Moving up the palace, which scores him a point. It's my turn. I'm going to play a seven here. Um, I am going to move twice for sure. Um, I'm going to take these two. So I get two points and a server back. I'm just going to go decree shopping. Bounces entry. He's sure claimed a lot of entry cards this game. All right, so when he goes decree shopping, he'd like to do um, the level four decree if he can afford it. 
Um, he, he pays servants instead of moving his envoy back, and that means he needs to pay a whopping four servants for that. Um, but it's going to do that. Place one here, and I'll score him four points at the end of the game, which maybe isn't the most efficient move he's got, but that's what he does. Um, Okay, well I need to reach the top of the um, the top of the track. Like that's that's kind of non-negotiable. So I'm going to go ahead and um, play this here. And I think the way I do this is um, I am going to put a servant on the wall, and then I'm going to pay my double servant to go up this track twice, having the four tokens, um, and I get a, an intrigue for that also. Uh, all right, Mung is out of cards, and so I've got the final, the final action here. Um, so I'm going to score the wall either way. Um, this is worth three points if I keep it, or I can pitch it to get an extra action. Um, and then I can claim, I can turn these in for two servants back if I can do anything with them. So I actually could ship again. Um, so what I'm, I, maybe I'll talk through this. What I'm thinking is right now I'm, I'm getting three points for this and I'm going to get four points for this. Um, what I could do is play this two here, um, for which I would, I would discard the two neutral servants to be able to play it, and then pitch all of these intrigue tokens to get back these two. So I would take the wall action on my card twice with the court lady, play these here to score the wall, march my traveler here, and then place something back onto the wall. Um, and so I would end up getting two wall scorings for eight total points there. Um, but maybe that's just not very good. Uh, because I already have three points plus the four points I'm going to get for that. I already have seven points. So almost anything is better. Um, all right. Let's go for the palace. We get up one point. I'm going to turn these in for two extra points. That's all I've got. All right, Twilight. Mung will pay one to advance his entry. Mung will travel. <laughs> oh, no. I just lost the wall. Is that what really happened after all that? I lost the wall after all that. Mung will pay one to place on a boat. He cannot. Mung will pay two. He cannot. Mung will travel, he can. After all that, I lost the wall. Um, okay, that's a thing that happened. Um, so Mung's, Mung's Twilight is done. I think this is not actually in the rules, but, when, but it's at the end of the day, and Mung's got four things, he's discarding that to get two points. That's fine, that's all he could do. Alright, end game. Um, Mung has four for destiny dice, three, four, and five. What do I have? I have one. So Mung wins that. Four points. Um, his boat will float, doesn't do much. And then nighttime scoring here, there's nothing, so no one gets anything. Um, okay, so we move on to end game scoring. So uh, we score the wall one more time, and unbelievably he wins. Um, we score the um, decrees. So the first one of these to score is for every three points. So one gets nine points from this, it goes up to 36. And I get the full 10 points and go up to 45. Um, and then the other ones. So end game scoring per decree, I have one, two, three, four, five, six decrees. So I get 12 points from that, and I get 12 points from that. So 24 more. So 45 goes to 69. And Mung gets um, four points from this thing, so it goes up to 40. Um, and then position on the palace track, Mung gets seven, goes to 47. I get five, go to 74. Uh, we get a court lady, I have a court lady, so I get three points for that, and I go to 77. And then Jade, Mung has four Jade, it's 10 points goes to 57. 
So we win. We win 77 to uh, 57.